Once I disclosed that I was Republican and the paper picked it up is when I started receiving uh, hate mail from Democrats and people that told me that I was a sellout and that it was the tradition of black people to be Democrat. Up until that time, I didn't really think much about it. The Republican Party has either not told a story well or a story has been hidden and contained by the liberal media. Uh, there would be no Voting Rights Act if it hadn't been for Republican Senate and House members. Okay, they would, they would not be the legislation we have today. It was Republicans mm -hmm. who stood up for that stuff. Uh, the Democrats were the racists back in those days. They, it was the Democratic South, mm -hmm. and those Democratic governors were the racists. But again, you know, history has been kind of rewritten. The Republican Party in Texas was started on the 4th of July, 1867, in Houston, Texas, by 150 blacks and 20 whites. It was that way across the South. The Republican parties were started in the South by African Americans. In the state of Texas, two of our first three statewide Republican chairmen were African American. Uh, the first 42 black legislators elected in Texas were all Republican. The first 112 black legislators elected in Mississippi were all Republican. The first 190 black legislators elected in South Carolina were all Republican. The first 41 in, in, in Georgia, the first 127 in Louisiana. So now you've got all these African Americans really stepping up and starting to gain political standing, political power. Now, you have Democrats on the other side who have been very racist. It's in their platforms. They support the Dred Scott decision. They think the fugitive slave law is great. Uh, they started a nation to keep slavery alive very racist and so now they're facing a situation where that these these blacks are now their rulers are now in office are now u.s senators are now u.s how do you stop that 1866 democrats themselves started the ku klux klan its purpose was not to kill blacks its purpose was to take control and return democrats to power their their stated purpose in the kkk was to stop republicans and restore democratic control now if you're looking for a Republican that you want to take care of, you, you can wipe out any black you want because they're 100% Republicans at that point in time. You can't wipe out any white. I mean, some whites might be Democrats. You've got to be a little more judicious when you're wiping out whites. So what happens is the Ku Klux Klan starts attacking, not blacks, Republican conventions. For example, in New Orleans, in the Republican convention in Louisiana, the Klan joined with the New Orleans police, joined with the New Orleans mayor, Democrats, they attacked physically at the convention in New Orleans, Republican convention. They killed 40 blacks, killed 20 whites, they wounded 150 others. 1868, they put out a push card in South Carolina, and it listed what they called the radical members of the South Carolina legislature. That push card's about the size of a baseball card. It was put up by the Klan. The Klan put it out. It had the, the pictures of 63 legislators that needed to be wiped out in South Carolina. 50 of those legislators were black, 13 were white. Now, they were all 63 Republican. On the back of the card, it gave you the name of each legislator so you'd know who you're trying to kill. Congress starts these hearings in this group called the Klan, and they have hearings, and, and so they bring in Democrat leaders that under oath from these Democrat states said, yes, the Klan belongs to our party. It, it's actually in Congress. 1872, the hearings, it's a 13-volume set of hearings in Congress. Unequivocally, Democrats say the Klan is ours and belongs to us. It's there to restore Democrat control in the southern states. Those guys who lived through it made it very clear. For example, one of the early black congressmen was John Roy Lynch. Another early black congressman was Richard Kane. And they're having to fight the Klan physically for their own safety. They, they go armed to Congress because of the Klan attacks. These guys said if we as blacks would simply stop voting the Republican ticket, if we would agree to vote the straight Democrat ticket, all the violence against us would be stopped. Uh, in 1964, um, incidentally, the year that three of our civil rights workers were killed in Mississippi registering blacks to vote, uh, was also the year that civil rights legislation, historic civil rights legislation, was being promoted, and President Johnson wanted to sign it, but nevertheless it was held up, bottled up, in the United States Senate by Southern Democrats. And one Democrat in particular who was the last individual to try to obstruct this legislation was a guy named Senator Robert Byrd of West Virginia who for 14 hours and 13 minutes held a filibuster against the civil rights legislation. Senator Robert Byrd used the uh, uh, nigger word three times 
on a national televised TV show. No outcry at all. Nobody said a thing, at least from the Democrat. No, the Black Caucus didn't say anything, the NAACP, no outcry. There's no price to pay when you're on the left and you make intemperate racial remarks. There's no price to pay. We say, well, it's just, we, we're making much to do about nothing. They wanted to destroy uh, Trent Lott. I mean, they went after him on BET, and this man had to eventually apologize. But nothing from uh, Senator Robert Byrd. Hypocrisy of liberals and media around how they reacted to Dodd's praise of Byrd on the Senate floor and the reaction of uh, Trent Lott praising an old man that was going to be dead within a year. Contrast that with the absolute silence of the liberal media around uh, Bob Byrd being praised. I mean, a Klansman, a Klan leader, not just a member of the Klan, not just influenced by the Klan, but a operational leader of the Klan. One of the things that has mystified me most over the last few years is to look at the civil rights establishment and have them uh, regard the news of Colin Powell uh, becoming America's first black Secretary of State, uh, Condi Rice becoming America's second black national security advisor. And not hear uh, some of them say, look, we have differences in opinion over their policies. We don't necessarily approve of everything they believe in, but this is a great step forward for Americans and black Americans in particular. What you hear instead is that, uh, well, they're tokens and uh, maybe they're wannabe whites and you have these awful cartoons, political cartoons that were done after, after Condi Rice was named Secretary of State where she was uh, sitting on a porch barefoot uh, looking like some kind of a welfare queen or something like that speaking in jive. Yet another one where she was a parrot sitting on George Bush's uh, shoulder with uh, big fat lips. I mean, just the most awful, hideous uh, racial stereotypes, anti-black stereotypes, uh, being hurled in the, f in the face of a very, very intelligent woman who was uh, a gr uh, Stanford University provost, speaks Russian, very accomplished woman from. Tendency to ascribe positive things to whiteness and negative things to blackness. So the kid who goes to the library and who plays the piano, uh, the, the classics, um, who studies. Is acting white. What it says basically, the people who argue that way, is that we black people uh, don't have control over our own minds. We're not allowed to think what we wish. And we're essentially supposed to walk around in a racial plantation where everybody's liberal, everyone believes in the Democratic Party. And in that respect, we're not really men and women, but sort of uh, like cattle. And so then they think, well, do I want to let my race down by acting white? Uh, do I want to betray my people by acting white? And they say, well, I guess not. I guess I'll act black and come to school unprepared not participate, not speak in proper English, talk jive, and what happens? You see a young black child's mind close up like that, and the kid's scores go down. And what have you done? You've ruined an American citizen for life.